we have a saying, you've never really lived, right, until you've almost died. It's a funny feeling to it is because you have this nerves, excitement and fear and it's just all rolled into one and it's a feeling that you get addicted to. Paul Johnson is a veteran of the 2006 Battle of Musakala. For 55 days the Royal Irish were under constant attack from the Taliban. The hardness was was on the main things, right? But then you add into you know uh, people getting injured every day. Every time you go up into one of them singers, uh, you're getting shot at. I remember the whistle of the mortars, uh, and you knew when at the end of the whistle there's an explosion, uh, and that whistle put the fear of God into people. 17 years on, these soldiers have had problems adjusting to civilian life. Unfortunately, there's been a lot uh, tried to kill themselves, uh, and a couple who have. Uh, obviously, of the nightmares uh, that they have, uh, it's taken its toll on them. Northern Ireland is 2.8% of the UK, but makes up 9% of the British forces. The only veterans hostel is privately funded. And Robert McCartney of Beyond the Battlefield explains why. During the uh, Good Friday Agreement, the signing of the Good Friday Agreement, there were 16 groups exempted from getting funding and they were all the paramilitary groups. But the paramilitaries also insisted that the military were involved in the no funding groups. So as soon as the Good Friday Agreement was signed, they then became community groups, where we can't become a community group because we are veterans. And as a result of that, community groups get millions in this country, as everyone's aware. Veterans get very, very little. This hostel gives a real chance for those that gave their all. And more importantly, a place to call home. When we got it, it was derelict. We spent 15 months really doing it up. Now, we didn't get any funding to do it up. They got no government funding, we got no funding from anyone. So basically it was funded by social clubs, by football clubs and just private private associations. And everything in there is basically recycled. But we've now got the 10 bedrooms and we've got veterans living in here now who would normally either be in the street or probably be in prison. Doogie Beattie, GB News, Port of Ogie.